The Cavalcade of America, starring Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Maureen O'Sullivan. Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you The Doctor and the President, starring Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Maureen O'Sullivan on The Cavalcade of America. First, here is Gain Whitman. Good evening. Because you think of your home as a haven of safety, you don't let the children play with matches or scissors. You yourself don't touch an electric switch while you're bathing. Then why risk serious injury from falls because of rugs you know are as slippery as eels? Anchor small rugs in your home with DuPont Rug Anchor. A non-skid underlay for rugs, Rug Anchor is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Now, The Doctor and the President, starring Douglas Fairbanks Jr. as Benjamin Waterhouse and Maureen O'Sullivan as Eliza on The Cavalcade of America. Today, President Truman was revaccinated against smallpox. And in this year of 1947, that sounds commonplace, matter of fact. And it is. But more than 100 years ago, when another president accepted vaccination, it was to dispel superstition and fear among the people of a young nation. Charles! Charles! William, what's the matter? You better get out. There's an epidemic. Smallpox. Smallpox? Where? Spreading through the city. My family's already left. I'll get Mary and the children. Have you got room in your wagon? Yes, but hurry. We haven't got much time. The scourge is spreading. Hundreds have died already. Hurry, Charles. Hurry! In the year 1800, the dread scourge smallpox swept through villages, towns, and cities in swift epidemics. Whole populations ran in panic to escape, but there was no escape. Then in Cambridge, Massachusetts, as yet untouched by smallpox, a doctor named Benjamin Waterhouse addressed the members of the town council. The experiments in England have shown decisively, gentlemen, that smallpox can be beaten, wiped out in time. There is no need to stand by and watch people die. We can and we must fight smallpox. It is only by fighting it before it appears that we can do away with the scourge. And vaccination is the answer. Dr. Waterhouse, the people will refuse to accept it. There there is something abhorrent to them in the idea of giving them an animal disease, this cowpox, in order to prevent a human disease. Dr. Jenner in England proved how successful it is that persons who have had cowpox do not get smallpox. Of course, but... Well, we shall have to wait. Wait while people die? Unfortunately, there is no way we can force vaccination on people. We've got to. How, doctor? I... I don't know yet. But they must be made to see, to understand. If they don't, we'll have to stand by and watch smallpox kill and kill and kill. It's nonsense. Utter nonsense. Nonsense. Worse, Eliza, it's the superstition of the Dark Ages. They insisted there's no way to prove the value of vaccination to the people. Benjamin, you mustn't be discouraged. May I come in? Oh, Uncle, please do. Oh, Benjamin, you didn't have much success at the meeting, did you? You were there, you heard. My boy, people won't accept this thing. People won't, people won't. I've heard enough of that. I don't care, Benjamin. As a doctor myself, I know that vaccination against smallpox will prove effective. So does the rest of the medical profession. Then why not do something about it? Because as long as people distrust and fear, we're helpless. I've been practicing medicine for a long time, and I've learned one thing above all others. Patience. Patience? Why patience? It's the only way. No great discovery has become any less great by waiting until people were ready to accept it. People are human beings, Benjamin. They have their distrusts and fears of new things. Why should anyone distrust or fear anything that'll keep them alive? I don't know. Oh, Benjamin, why not waste? Uncle's right. Let the people get used to the idea. Meanwhile, smallpox will kill more of them. Perhaps. I don't want to see that. No, I. But there's nothing one man can do. Oh, if you keep up this fight, you'll ruin your own health. 
I love you, Benjamin. I don't want to see you like this. You make it sound so easy. Just quit. <sighs> as easy as closing a door or a book. For our sake, Benjamin. For mine and little Danny's. Eliza's right, Benjamin. You've got to think of your family first. If you persist in trying to force this thing on people, they'll shun you. You'll lose your practice. All right, all right, all right. I'll think it over. There, Mrs. Jenkins, I think Kathy will be all right in the morning. Just remember, give her a teaspoonful of this every hour. Thank you, Dr. Waterhouse. Um, was that your little boy in the yard as I came in? Why, yes, that's Martin. I, uh, I noticed pock marks on his face. Smallpox? Yes, he had it three years ago. But Kathy's never had it, eh? Why, no, never. But why are you asking, Doctor? Mrs. Jenkins, Martin was very sick, wasn't he? Well, yes, we thought he was going to die. He was very lucky he didn't. Now, I don't want to frighten you, but if Kathy should get smallpox... Perhaps she wouldn't be as lucky as Martin. What? There's a way to prevent smallpox, Mrs. Jenkins. I can do it right now if you'll permit it. Doctor, you're, you're not thinking of that, that whatever you call oh, it. I don't know what you heard about it, Mrs. Jenkins, but please believe me, it won't harm Kathy in the least. Perhaps oh, a little fever for a day or so, and, well, after that, you'll never have to worry about smallpox for her. Well, Doctor, I don't like to even Hundreds think... of children in England have been vaccinated, and they're all right. You'll not do it here, Doctor. Oh, Mr. Jenkins. You'll be doing me the favor of going, Doctor. Now, look here, Mr. Jenkins. I'm sure that if you give no. me just a moment... I've heard about this business. I'll have no child of mine stuck by that devilish lancet. I've heard of people turning into animals because of it. Animals? That's nonsense. If you'll just listen a moment... Get out I'll... of here and stay out! Yes? Oh, it's you, Doctor. Good morning, Mr. Thompson. What do you want? I'm sorry to trouble you, sir, but some weeks ago, I, I attended your wife and your new daughter. I, um... Well, I have no doubt my bill was overlooked in the excitement. And... No, I remember it. Good. Well, I, I was wondering if I might collect it. I, I need the money rather badly. You're not and... going to collect that bill yet, Doctor. Oh. Well, I suppose it can wait if you're a little pressed. It's not that, and I haven't overlooked it. This is my way of protesting against your attempts to spread the cowpox over the city. Good day, sir. Tradespeople refuse me credit. People walk on the other side of the street when I pass. Oh, what am I going to do, Uncle? I thought he'd given up that oh, idea. I thought so, too, but he hasn't. He said nothing to me. I read this in the paper this morning. Look at it. One cannot but suspect the wisdom of this self-styled philanthropist. He would be well advised to quit this dangerous inquiry. Hmm. Benjamin seen this? I don't think so. Oh, but what are we going to do? Oh, my dear, don't worry about oh, I it. I have to. It's not for myself, but for Danny. Now, listen to me, Eliza. Hmm? Benjamin is young, perhaps hot-headed. Let him go for a while. Oh. He'll settle down. He, well, he has a singularly purposeful mind. I was the same. It took me a long, long time to learn that one man couldn't force the whole world to his ideas. And little by little, by steps that are so small, they cannot be perceived. Little by little, this pernicious cowpox turns human beings who have been injected with it into animals. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. good friend, you're wrong. Believe me, you're wrong. Now, oh, here's the great scientist himself. Here's the man who would turn his neighbors into cattle. Bring him up! Bring him up! This is the man who would turn innocent babes into beasts with his devilish ideas. No, good people, listen to me. Listen to me. I implore you. Go ahead and implore. I want to bring you the benefits of science. I want to end the disease. Get out of here. Get out of here before we knock you down. Can't I make you understand? Can't I make you see? Oh, if I could only make them see, Elizabeth. If only they'd listen to me. You try, darling. You know they won't. Your uncle was right, Liza. 
And so are the other doctors. It takes too much strength to go against the whole stream. Perhaps it's better if I do forget us. For now, yes. I... I guess it hasn't been too good for you and Danny, has it? Oh, darling, I'd be willing to go through anything for you, if it were only for myself. But there is Danny. We can't make him suffer with us. We're not rich. Now, perhaps if you waited just a little while, build up a better practice, then we might... I've thought of that. Believe me, I've tried to keep my mouth closed. But I couldn't. Something inside me keeps pushing me on. Makes me talk when I shouldn't. Try not to think about it anymore tonight, huh? All right. Come on. Say goodnight to Danny. He's been waiting for you. You will forget about it, won't you? (laughs) I guess I'll have to. Mama? Yes, darling? Did Papa come with you? I'm here, Danny. Light the lamp, Papa. Oh, it's too late, Danny. (laughs) I just came in to say goodnight. Oh. Come on, son. Kiss me goodnight. That's the boy. Now, sleep tight. I will. Good night, Papa. Mama. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Danny. Every time I look at Danny, I think of the hundreds like him who've been marred or killed by smallpox. It mustn't happen to him. Oh, don't even think about it. Liza. Yes? There's one way to make sure. I... I've been thinking... Benjamin. Listen to me, dear. I'm... No. No. Now, wait, please. Danny can be my proof that no harm comes from vaccination. Oh, you must be insane. He's your own son. And for that very reason, I'd vaccinate him. Oh, you are mad. Why? Because I'm willing to immunize my own son against a disease that kills hundreds oh, like him. no, but... Liza, it's the only way. People will trust me when they know what I've done. Oh, I can't believe it's you, Benjamin. I just can't believe you it. You must have faith in me. Oh, faith in you for anything but that. Would you feel the same about someone else's child? Oh, that's not a fair argument. Nor is it fair to use the vaccine on Kathy Jenkins or anyone else and not trust it for my own son. Liza, I am a doctor. I've got to think about... Well, I won't hear any more about it. I swear, Benjamin, that if you mention it again, I'll leave you. And I'll take Danny with me. You deny him life because of stupid prejudice? I deny you the right to use your son as, a, as an animal. Eliza, listen to oh, me. Oh, if you must try it on someone, try it on me. Yes, me. Oh, I'd sooner you did that than, than hurt Danny. You've had smallpox. You've got your immunity. It won't strike at you again. But Danny is something I told else. you what I'd do if you mentioned that again. All right, but I will mention it again and again and again. I'll tell anyone who'll listen. Oh. If I have to, I'll leave Cambridge and go to the highest authority in the country. Benjamin... You've let this become an obsession. Yes, that's right. Such an obsession that I'm going and willing to forget everything else. Eliza, I am going to leave. I'm going to Washington. What are you talking about? There's one man who listened. One man with enough authority and prestige and enough intelligence to see the truth. President Thomas Jefferson. No, Danny. The bells ring that way when people die. Look, Mama. Why are there red flags over some of the houses? Those are the houses where people are sick. I'm going outside. No, no, come back here, Danny. Now, you mustn't go outside. You must not. Do you hear me? But why not? Because the sickness is out there waiting. Waiting for little boys like you. And I don't want... Eliza. It's bad. Very bad. Oh. A few cases at first, now 10, 15, 20. Tomorrow there may be a hundred more. Isn't there anything you can do? There's nothing any doctor can do. We're preparing to use the libraries as hospitals. Is it, is it coming this way? Oh, who knows? When it spreads, there's no marking its course as one would a ship. Did you look for Benjamin? Yes, I did. He hasn't returned. Oh. What a stupid thing for him to do. Was it stupid? Of course it was. The presence of the United States has other things to do. You think he'll listen to one doctor with an idea? I wonder. You wonder? But you tried to keep him from going. Oh, yes, I know I did. But perhaps, perhaps the president would listen. Oh, it's nonsense. It lies, so it's no use. Benjamin can't force vaccination. I tell you that Thomas Jefferson will think the same as we, that we have to wait patiently before we try anything as new as vaccination. <laughs> You are listening to Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. as Benjamin Waterhouse and Marina Sullivan as Eliza in The Doctor and the President on the Cavalcade of America sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry.
Seeking to introduce vaccination against smallpox into the United States, Dr. Benjamin Waterhouse meets rebuff after rebuff. Waterhouse refuses to give up, however, despite protests, threats, and prejudice. He goes to see the one man who he thinks will help him, President Thomas Jefferson. In my letter, Mr. President, I've explained the process of vaccination. Yes, I read the letter, Dr. Waterhouse. And what do you think, sir? Well, I should like to know a little more. Mr. President, in England, Dr. Jenner discovered that dairymaids were somehow immune to smallpox. Dairymaids? Why dairymaids in particular? Well, those who had a disease called cowpox were passed over by an epidemic of smallpox that took hundreds of lives. Hmm. But uh, what has vaccination to do with this? Well, Dr. Jenner prepared a vaccine, infected a human being with cowpox, and then proved that person immune to smallpox. And that's what you want to do? I do. But I need someone with authority, a sponsor, a patron, someone whose eminence will silence those who oppose vaccination. Oh, myself, for example? Yes, sir. Doctor. Yes, sir? What other proof have you that vaccination is successful? The British Navy has ordered its adoption. Vaccination is compulsory among soldiers of the Gibraltar garrison. Sir, there are hundreds upon hundreds of proofs today, men and women and children whom smallpox is not touched because of vaccination. I see. And what exactly do you want me to do? Sponsor it. Doctor, what you ask of me is difficult. I I believe you. The proofs you've cited are enough to make me believe in vaccination, but... Uh, but what, Mr. President? I cannot force it upon the people. I see, sir. Well, it was very kind of you to see me. I, I'll take no more of your time. Uh, just a moment. I kept a French minister waiting because of your letter to me and the urgency it sounded. I wouldn't have talked this long had I not believed in you. Doctor, have you any of that vaccine with you? Why, yes, sir. I want you to leave some of it with me. Leave it? But... Together with the necessary directions for vaccination. What are you going to do, sir? Try it. On my servants, neighbors, if they'll allow it. On my family, and on myself. You... you'll do that, sir? Yes. You see, Doctor, not too long ago, we fought a war for independence. There were those who thought that struggle useless against the tremendous odds we faced. But there were those with vision and faith. The birth of our nation depended upon those two qualities. The progress and welfare of our country will always depend upon them. Please leave me that vaccine. That and my deepest gratitude. Benjamin, thank God you're back. Hello, Uncle. I suppose you saw we have an epidemic here. Oh, Benjamin, darling. Oh, my dearest, Danny. Oh, he's all right. We've been keeping him in the house. Oh, thank God. When did this start? Several days ago. It's been raging. Oh, you, you've got to listen to me now. President Jefferson has agreed to try the vaccine on himself and his family. Now I'm going to vaccinate Danny. Oh. Eliza, no matter what you say or think... I'm not going to stand by and allow superstitious fear and distrust to interfere with our son's safety. Danny is to be vaccinated as soon as I can do it. Oh. You understand why, don't you? I don't know. Eliza, I... if Danny were my boy, I'd say yes. I... All right, Benjamin. Do what you will. Do what you can. Tell Danny to come in, Eliza. Danny... Danny, you will be careful not to frighten him, won't you, Benjamin? I promise you, my dear. Yes, Mama? Papa wants to talk to you, Danny. Danny, come here. Are you a good soldier, son, brave as a hero? I hope so, Papa. <laughs> you know, son, don't you, I, I would never harm you. Yes, Papa. And if you feel like crying, son, start counting. Yes. Now, watch Mama. Listen to the story she'll tell you. And don't forget... Count, if you feel like crying. Tell me the story, Mama. Well, once upon a time, in a kingdom long ago, there was a little boy, a prince. Hold his arm, will you, the Uncle? The prince was very lonesome. Don't look at me, Danny. No, Papa. Listen to your mother. Mama. And as he went walking along... <gasps> Remember the soldier, son. Yes, Papa. Count, Danny, count. One, two, three... Four, five, 
six. That's the boy. Seven. Papa, I'm afraid I'll have to cry because... Because... Yes, Danny? Because I can't count any further. Then cry, son. Even soldiers cry. Eliza, only a week and Danny's well. Oh, I know. Isn't it wonderful? But, Benjamin, what about the people who fought you? What about them now? They know what I did with Danny, but... But what, dear? I know, and you know, that vaccination doesn't harm a person. You see that with Danny. Yes. But that isn't all you wanted to say, is it, dear? No. What I've done is only a part of the work, Liza. Vaccinating Danny was only the beginning... Now I must prove that Danny is immune. What? What do you intend to do? Take him to the hospital. Keep him there among patients who are ill, dying of smallpox. It must be that way. There is no other way. I see. Darling, I can't force this as I did the vaccination. Now you must decide. I'm not afraid anymore, darling. How long will it have to be, Benjamin? Fifteen days, at least that long. I'll stay with him. Yes, darling. Five days, eh, Benjamin? Five days this morning, Uncle. And no sign of a disease? Not yet. Not yet. Can't we take him home now, Benjamin? It's been ten days. Oh, surely that's long enough. It must be 15, Liza. A shorter time would prove nothing. Uh, Now, you get some sleep, dear. I'll I'll stay by him. Yes. And call me. I'll call you. Good night. Good night. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Danny, you're going home today. I'm glad, Mama. You've been a great soldier, Danny. I'm proud of you. Papa, I wasn't sick like the rest of them in here, was I? No, son, you weren't. Benjamin, the the people, do they believe you now? Now they do. They come voluntarily to be vaccinated. I'm proud of you, Benjamin. Oh, let's be proud of Danny. Go on, son, we're going home. We're going home, and on the way, we'll buy out every sweet shop we see. (laughs) Come on. Dr. Waterhouse, I am glad to see you. Mr. President. So it worked, eh? It worked. And your experiments? Wonderful. Doctor, I'm not going to try to thank you for what you've done. I I don't think I could find the words. But the whole nation is deeply grateful to you. To me? Oh, no, sir, to you. When I came to you, I was a desperate man. I'd almost given up. I was ready to forget the whole thing and wait as I was told to do. I'm glad you didn't. But it was you, Mr. President, who gave me the courage to try again. It was your example and your faith that sent me back to Cambridge, determined not to give up. I think of what's happened to us not as as an experiment in medicine, but as a living proof that our country will always be as great as the men who conceived it. Today, vaccination is accepted almost universally as the means of fighting and destroying smallpox. Today, there are long lines of men and women waiting their turn to be vaccinated. No longer fearing epidemics, but knowing that because of men like Dr. Waterhouse, they can turn their backs on fear. Here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. 
Everybody knows what an automobile radiator is. It cools the water that cools the motor. Just because it is so well made, and efficient in fact, too many of us forget it's there under the hood. When we drive into a service station for gasoline or oil, and the man asks, check the water, we have to think for a minute sometimes. Water? Then we say, at least I do, oh, sure, sure, thanks. Now, the gasoline vapor inside the motor of your car burns at temperatures as high as 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough, actually, to melt the metal of your motor. In fact, melt your car. And that's why motor heat must be carried away, and carried away fast. If the tubes of the radiator clog with rust, it handicaps the cooling system. And that means trouble-scored cylinders, burnt-out valves, or worse. Chemical science has been at work on this problem for many years. And chemistry can be of definite service in keeping the radiator of your car rust-free and trouble-free. DuPont Cooling System Cleanser makes it simple and easy. This is the time of year to use it, too. All you have to do is pour a can of DuPont Cooling System Cleanser into the radiator. Then run the motor for half an hour or more and drain the radiator. This dissolves the rust which drains out with the dirty water. After draining out the cooling system and refilling it with clean water, you can help to keep new rust from forming by pouring in a can of DuPont Acid and Rust Inhibitor. Then it's wise to guard against leaks by pouring in DuPont Cooling System Sealer. This chemical will flow with the water and keep the system leak-proof without clogging the radiator. DuPont Cooling System Cleanser DuPont Acid and Rust Inhibitor and DuPont Cooling System Sealer are used and sold at service stations everywhere. They are a money-saving trio of DuPont Better Things for Better Living through chemistry. Women without men were not welcome in the hardy and courageous group that set out to settle what was to be the state of Tennessee. But when Ann Robertson was widowed early in the journey, she refused to consider returning to North Carolina and decided to prove how useful an unattached woman could be. Be sure and listen next Monday to Frontier Widow, the story of Ann Robertson starring Ann Baxter on the Cavalcade of America. The Doctor and the President was dramatized with the cooperation of Princeton University Press, which is publishing the, the papers of Thomas Jefferson under a grant from the New York Times. In connection with the enterprise, a search is being made for all manuscript copies of Jefferson documents, including letters written to Jefferson. All persons who know of such manuscripts outside of the large collections in public institutions are requested to communicate with the editor, Julian P. Boyd, Princeton University Library, Princeton, New Jersey. The music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our Cavalcade story was written by Robert Walston. Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. is currently starring in his own production, The Exile. Maureen O'Sullivan will next be seen in the Paramount picture, The Big Clock. In tonight's Cavalcade cast were George Zucco as Uncle, Henry Blair as Danny, and Bill Johnstone as President Jefferson. This is John Heaston inviting you little next week to Ann Baxter in Frontier Widow on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>